Good day. For those of you who, who do not know me, my name is Douglas Harder. This is the second in a series of three talks on a technique for memorizing Morse code. This technique uses word association, however it's using the shape of the characters and this allows you to use the visual cortex. The last talk focused on the alphabet and there's a PDF linked to in the comments of this video. Now we're going to look at numbers, punctuation, and symbols. Now in the last talk we looked at the alphabet and we saw that short letters could be used to represent dots while tall letters and capitals could be used to represent dashes. For example, the Morse code for R could be remembered by learning the word rye, as in rye whiskey. Next we're going to look at numbers. Now numbers follow a really easy pattern. All you have to do is remember for the numbers 1 through 5 is to count to 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The only thing is you use a dot up until the number you want and you use dashes thereafter. For example, the Morse code for 2 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. While the Morse code for 4 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. For 6, 7, 8, and 9, simply count from 6 to 10. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Only now use dashes up until the number you want and dots thereafter. For example, 8 would be represented by 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If you want, you can consider 0 as 10 in this pattern, a sequence of 5 dashes. All right. That's a nice technique for remembering the numbers. We're going to conclude by looking at Morse code for punctuation and symbols. Now, punctuation and symbols initially appears to be more difficult because they use five through seven dots and dashes. But remember, we're just learning a mnemonic word or phrase. So for example, the period can be remembered by just remembering stop it. The comma, well the comma does look like a plow, and therefore that's an appropriate mnemonic as well. The colon, two dots. Well the original word pylon meant the Egyptian architectural structure where you had two tall towers on either side of an entrance. Consequently pylon is most appropriate for the colon. Pylons is most appropriate for colons. Given the state of English grammar these days the semicolon is in a way going the way of the dodo. Consequently, I just remembered do, do, do. As for the question mark, remember the question and how? That's a nice way of remembering the Morse code for the question mark. To remember the Morse code for the exclamation mark, remember to yell. The apostrophe was a little bit more difficult, just because it's hard to find words that, has, that have four tall characters in a row. But rhythm, as in rhythm, and blues seems to work quite nicely for me. What does a quotation mark do? Well, quotation marks will separate out a quote. The dash does look like a barrel, and parentheses are used to surround text. Consequently, we start with a hedge, and once we're finished, the text has been hedged. The slash, well slashing is something that is done with a knife. The plus symbol does vaguely represent the shape of the club's suit. If two things are at the same height, they are level. So if they have equal height, they are level. The underscore is so flat, although I can't see anyone using the underscore in Morse code. For the ampersand, you can remember the word again. Or alternatively, you can just remember A and S, but run the Morse code for A dot dash together with the Morse code for S without a significant space between them. This is represented in Morse code parallels by putting an overscore above the A and the S together. As for the at symbol, Mo, where would you like to be? I'd like to be at Fiji. Who else? Why wouldn't you want to be there? However, you can also remember AC, the Morse code for A, at, followed by the Morse code for C, which we, where we remember the word Kate. 
Finally, this is the coolest because I didn't even need regular expressions, it just came to me. The Morse code for the dollar sign. Richest. Alright, consequently we've gone through the Morse code for punctuation and other symbols. If you do not remember the Morse code for a dollar sign, well maybe you should find another technique, sorry about that. There's two others that we should look at. Uh, a warning is denoted by this Morse code sequence, and you can remember it by the word sharp. An error in Morse code is denoted, is brought to the attention of the receiver by sending eight dots. So you can either remember one error, or you can just remember that this is just essentially two H's juxtaposed. So in this second topic, we've continued the mnemonic for learning Morse code, where we associate each punctuation, letter, number, or symbol with a word or a phrase. Short characters represent dots, tall characters and, rep and, da and capital letters represent dashes. In this talk, we considered numbers, punctuations, and symbols. In the comments, there's a link to a PDF, and next we're going to look at other aspects of Morse code. Those are my references. Thanks for listening and have a good day. Cheers.